My coffee's good. Oh yeah? Yes. It was free because you got it for me. So yeah. what do you want? I'm just saying it's good coffee. Mm -hmm. I have a department head meeting in 30 minutes. Two so bros talking to each other. What do you want? Maybe you could answer a couple questions for the paper? Oh, no, Andy, I don't want to do an interview. Oh, come on. Just, just a couple questions. This is so weird, Andy. No, it's not. Just think of me as any other reporter. Come on. Awesome. <clears throat> what was it like growing up as a child martyr? It was tough. Yeah. Because I believed in what I was saying so vividly. Because everyone around me was desperately searching for something to believe in. Somewhere in the midst of it all, I got lost. That's good. What inspires your writing? Just... The need to have my story told, in case there are any other little girls out there who feel a little lost in their religion. I want them to know they are not alone. Do you consider yourself to be anti-Catholic? Why are you asking me that? My editor likes things a little controversial. And my editor doesn't want me denouncing my Catholicism in the paper. Kind of defeats the purpose of the book. Fair point. No. Comment. So what's next for Isabel Hyde, best-selling author? Well, I'd like to take a little time off from writing and just focus on my teaching job. We're letting you go. I'm sorry, what? It's a self-explanatory statement, Miss Hyde. You're fired. Well, can I ask why? Your evaluations were overwhelmingly negative. I find that very hard to believe. One of the students probably got a bad grade and wanted to get back at me. Professor Hyde is the worst professor I have ever had. She doesn't care about students, bails on office hours, and gives no explanations for her grading. That is one negative example, Cynthia. The students know the work they did, and they should understand where they got the grades they got. Professor Hyde doesn't seem to care about this class at all. She doesn't even read our papers. I know this because I copied and pasted a fondue recipe in the middle of my midterm just to check. A page into the paper, you already know where it's probably going anyway. It's the same with books. Miss Hyde, it seems you're a little more of an author than a teacher, doesn't it? We wish you the best in all your future endeavors. Susan. Isabel, I just read your interview in the canvas. I noticed no mention whatsoever about the fact you're working on your next book. Susan, this is really not the best time. <clears throat> and speaking of the book, when are you sending me your proposal? You know, I'm really swamped right now, all right? We'll need to meet about it next week. Excuse me, Mi miss, 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 excuse me, miss. Hold on a sec, Susan. What? Um, could you spare a dollar, please? Sorry, no. Sorry, Susan. Oh, all right. Yeah, I can get it done. I just God need bless to you. Please. God bless you. Okay. Proposal. No problem.
so screwed. It's gonna be fine, Is. I have no job, no proposal idea, and I'm not gonna be able to live off my first book advance for that much longer. Well, maybe it's a blessing in disguise. I mean, now that you're not teaching, you can focus on your writing. It's not even work. I can't even focus in my own apartment. I feel like I'm living in a frat house. Beth has a point, though. I mean, you don't have to live by the university. You can move somewhere quieter. Sure, a house hunt. Because that's just what I need right now. I think I'm going to go. See you guys. She's really something, isn't she? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. My wife grew up in this house. I retired last year and started working on sprucing up these family properties. Oh, I'm Glenn. Isabel. So, Isabel, what's got you on the house hunt? My career is moving in a different direction. <clears throat> I want to live somewhere I can focus on my writing. Well, I'm supposed to have a tenant by to see the place in a few minutes. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I can come back. Uh, but we can reschedule. I have a good feeling about you. I practically had to gut this place. We did all the wiring, installed this railing myself, even scavenged those windows from a condemned house downtown. <laughs> You're very resourceful. Thank you. I even have a setup of my own down in the basement. I stay there sometimes when I'm doing repairs. You live in the basement? <laughs> the gal who lives here right now says she can't even tell when I'm here. I'm just in and out, don't cause her any bother. Now this used to be my wife's room. She shared it with her three sisters. She has four brothers besides. Catholic. Uh, I was raised Catholic, that's why I asked. Do you go to Mass here? Uh, no. I don't really practice anymore. Oh. And why is that? This is your Sarah, this is Sarah. I just saw something outside. What is it, Isabel? I saw the Virgin Mary. My child, where do you think you saw her? The lot behind the school. She had a thin face. She wasn't very beautiful, but she was glowing from the inside. She seemed hurt. Hurt? Why was she hurt, Isabel? She told me that someone close to St. Stephen's will be in heaven soon. He's dead. I guess it just got away from me. Thank you again for the tour. This really is beautiful but it might be a little out of my price range. Uh, listen, I'll tell you what. I'm willing to rent this place at more than 60% under market value, as long as I can get a tenant in here that I trust. I go on instinct, I go on gut, and I can tell you're smarter than the rest of them. I appreciate that. Drop an application off at my office and I'll see what I can do for you. Okay, excellent. Thank you again. Isabel, take it. It's from the tree out back. Oh? <laughs> Actually, it's from the kitchen, but the tree out back does grow apples, biggest you've ever seen. Thank you. Hi, Glenn. This is Isabel, uh, the girl you showed the house to last week. I dropped off my application a few days ago, and I was just calling to check in and see how the process is going. Please give me a call back. Thank you. Mm. Mm. 
Hey, Susan. She lives. I've been trying to reach you for the last week. Have you not been getting any of my emails? Um, I guess not. Sorry about that. You missed the deadline for your proposal. I need it yesterday. There is a new book, correct? Susan, I'm in the middle of a move right now, and it's just been very hard to write in this environment. I just know when I get settled somewhere nice, I'll be able to write again. You have two weeks. That's all I could get you. Until then, I'll schedule another book signing. We need to keep you relevant. Hi, Miss Hyde. I'm a huge fan of your memoir. Thank you. It's always great to meet fans. The raw honesty of it is just so refreshing in the way you don't hold anything back. It's such a biting commentary on Catholicism. It's heartbreaking the way that you were swept up in all of this at such a young age just to feel connected to your faith. Really, truly incredible. Isabel? Isabel? What do you see? She's back. Oh, sweetheart, what does she look like? She's wearing a blue dress. Her cheeks are rosy. Honey, what is she telling you? Something bad is going to happen to us soon. But she's watching over us. As long as we have faith in her, the Virgin Mary will keep us safe. I'm glad you enjoyed the book. Thank you. Isabel! Fancy seeing you here. Did you write this? Um, yes, I did. <laughs> A memoir. Wow, I had no idea the other day that I was talking to a famous author. I, I wouldn't say famous. Well, I'll have to see what all this fuss is about after I get your signature, of course. Hi, Isabel. Glenn here. Thanks for your interest in the house. My initial impressions of you were that you were practical yet funky, and that you would like the house with all of its special touches. But after doing a bit of research and taking a look at your book, I learned that you are a very intense and complicated person who might require a more stimulating environment than this neighborhood would provide. My wife is friendly with a young engaged couple, and she thinks they would be a better fit. May your creative energies stay focused. Don't forget, all artists have one thing in common. Imagination. And you've got that in spades. I knew it. He read my book and he got scared off. By your life? No, by my eagerness to graphically disclose it. Not that graphic. Yeah, well, he's also Catholic, so he's got to hate me. Do you think the Pope just sends out alerts to all of his parishes? A tornado devastated the south side of Westphalia last night, leaving several homes and businesses completely leveled. St. Stephen's Church, located right in the middle of the wreckage, was left remarkably untouched. I'm standing in the lot behind St. Stephen's, where crowds of people are gathering to seek comfort after last night's disaster. What exactly has happened here that is drawing in all of these people? One of our students, Isabel, was actually visited by the Virgin Mary right here. And she warned us of the death of one of our priests and the tornado right before it happened. 
Our bishop is currently in the process of evaluating her claims, but we all know that the Virgin Mary is watching over us. Well, it doesn't seem to be stopping people from coming here to pray in the meantime. Yes, we have had a lot of visitors in the past few hours. Mary's presence here has been a great comfort to us during such a difficult time. So, Isabel, what was it like to be the one to see the Virgin Mary? I wasn't scared. Mary is here to protect us. Well, I committed blasphemy. I lied about seeing the Virgin Mary on multiple occasions for literally no other reason than liking the attention. I'm sure he doesn't hate you. I mean, who stays Catholic nowadays anyways? This place is my dream house. If my nine-year-old self saw this house, she'd lose her mind. Didn't you say he lives in the basement? That's a little creepy. He doesn't live in the basement. He just stays there when he's doing repairs. Oh, I think Besides, I'd rather have some guy in the basement than a bunch of drunks pissing all over the street. Well, I think you dodged a bullet there. He sounds creepy. I mean, I doubt he just happened to show up at your book signing. He's not creepy. I think it's just me. I'm just doomed to exile. Relax, Isabel. It's his loss. You'll find a new place. Oh my god, it's him! Don't answer that. What what if he No, oh, don't, don't, house. don't, no, nope, nope. Hey, mm -mm. Andy! Nope, mm -mm. Mm -mm. nope. You'll thank me for this later. Oh my Trust god, me. God, Andy. Okay. Give me that. Oh, no, no. Oh. Isabel! Glenn here. I don't know if you've come to your senses yet, or if you're still interested in the house, but I managed to convince my wife you'd be a far better tenant than the engaged couple. So it's yours if you want it. For certain this time. He sounds like a smug little prick. He can't just jerk you around like that. But the house! <sighs> okay, you're right. You're right. I'm over it. My beautiful, darling Isabel, I see that you have yet to respond to my message. I am emailing now to assure you that my intentions with you were honorable and to tell you a story. On the afternoon of April 19th, a young woman, innocently unaware of her own enchantment and power, befriended a man whose life had until then been one of banal existence. He saw that this was a very fragile girl, and immediately he vowed to always be protective of her, like a grandfather. Now that she is gone, he will forever cherish that final touch, that final glimpse, that final sound of her voice. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Hey, can you spare a dollar? No, no, I'm sorry. I was walking here, you know. Who do you think you are? Isabel, it seems I am unable to forget about you. I remember you peeking through the window that afternoon. You looked like a little girl delighted to meet her fate. You looked 15. My new project, Isabel, is you.
I'm starting to hate you. I was listening to your phone message again today. You sounded hot, oozing charm in every inflection. You sounded like a whore, not the precious, fragile girl I remembered. Given your history, I should have known. You were playing me. I read all about it in your book. You wanted to be a martyr, to make yourself into a victim when all you are is a liar. <laughs> She's purifying her soul. The Blessed Virgin Mary may speak to her again. I'm scared. I want my mommy. like to file for a restraining order. We can help you with that. You'll just have to file some paperwork. Will he be at the hearing? He has the option to be. Will he be able to talk to me? He won't be able to address you directly. He'll be sitting in separate sections of the courtroom. Everything's very controlled. I want to minimize contact with him as much as possible. He probably won't even show up. Most of the time they don't. dropping it on you. I just don't feel comfortable going home right now. This man's been stalking me and I just filed a restraining order and he knows where I live and I'm just, I need to be somewhere other than there. If I could just come in and sit in your living room and read or something for a while, I won't get in your way. Isabel, just, what? Come on, get in here, come on. Andy's still at work, but just take a deep breath and start from the beginning. This landlord showed me this house a few weeks ago. He read my book, and now he won't stop emailing me. He's completely delusional and seems to think we have some kind of relationship. So, I went down to the courthouse today and filed for a restraining order. You know, something kind of like that happened to me once. Really? What? Yep. There was this wacko who lived in the Catholic charity shelters across from my old building. And um, this guy, he would jerk off sitting in his windowsill. Yeah. One night he actually tried to break in when I was sleeping, so I had to break my lease and move in with Andy. Jesus Christ! Well, now I feel comparatively lucky. I don't know. I mean, this guy has access to your personal information, and he's much more articulate and self-possessed. This makes me want to change the book. Change everything in it. Your book? Why? Because I keep picturing him reading it. It makes me seem so cold and hard. I don't want people to think that they can hurt me and I won't feel it. They read that, they think I'm immune to everything. I'm such a fucking mess. Like, I just want to write a book called I'm a Fucking Mess. Leave me alone. You know? Well, what would you even change? Your daughter has a bleeding ulcer, probably stress-induced, but... With treatment, she's gonna be just fine. Are you sure it's an ulcer, doctor? Our daughter's been having a lot of strange episodes recently. We've, we've run multiple tests. I can assure you it's 
just an ulcer. Sweetheart, does this have anything to do with your visions? Did Mary say something new to you, sweetie? It's all right. If the doctor is wrong, you can tell us. Aren't doctors always right? Well, God works in mysterious ways. Sometimes even the doctors don't understand. But what if it's not God? What if I'm just sick? We know this is scary, but you can be honest with us. We believe in you. We always will. I lied. Lied about what, Isabel? The visions. I never saw Mary. I made it all up. Mrs. and Mr. Hyde, did Isabel start spontaneously bleeding in the church? Isabel, have you found any wounds on your hands and feet? No comment. We need answers. Your followers are waiting. No comment. Get out. I said get out! Isabel. Oh, what have you done? Oh, I don't know. One moment I was making something up for attention. The next I was on the national news. Everyone in my town went crazy, even my parents. I pretended that it was all because I just believed in what I was saying so much. But I don't. I never did. You were just confused. Kids lie all the time. They just don't normally end up on the national news for it. People would come up to me and say, aren't you that Virgin Mary girl from the news? I had to move away as soon as I could. But I knew no matter where I went, people might know about what happened. So I decided to just tell them. Everyone. All at once. No one can slander me if I've already slandered myself. Does that make any sense? It does. Look. You're not a bad person, Isabel. No matter what your book is about, that doesn't give this guy any right to harass you like this. You did the right thing, okay? Thanks. Yeah. Good afternoon. This is Monique Brown, appellant, and William Johnson, respondent. It's my understanding that there will be no appearance for the respondent today. Miss Brown, would you like to make a statement explaining why you filed this request. That's him. Yes. In 2010, I initiated this action. Does <laughs> he think he is, Ari Krishna? Oh my God, what a creep. He looks deranged. But obviously, he can't understand that restraining order means stay away. This got renewed once already, and he still keeps coming around. Last week, he tried to break into my house by climbing down my chimney. I shouldn't be here. What are you talking about? I'm not even in any danger. Isabel, that wacko is harassing you. He's getting what he deserves. Miss Brown, I'm renewing your restraining order for another three years. <sighs> Thank you, Your Honor. The next case is Isabel Hyde versus Glenn Elkin. Kill him. Miss Hyde, would you like to make a statement explaining why you filed this request? Your Honor, the defendant, Glenn Elkin, has been harassing me for the past three weeks via the email correspondence that I've provided for you today. I was disturbed not only because this man was my father's age, but because he is so estranged from reality that he has constructed a narrative intimacy and attachment to me that is based on absolutely nothing. I filed this order to nip this obsession in the bud before it grows completely out of control. Miss Hyde, did a defendant ever threaten you or assault you in any way? No, Your Honor. However, I've seen him lurking outside my apartment. I applied for a lease in a house that he owns, so I know for a fact that he has my address. Mr. Elkin, you now have a chance to respond. Your Honor, I never went to Ms. Hyde's house, and if I was near it, 
I wasn't aware of it. As for the emails, I offered to help her and hoped for a friendship. She told me she was a Catholic. I assumed she understood guilt. Your Honor, it's excerpts like these that raise an eyebrow. The nuns and brothers were not sadists. They did not enjoy paddling children. I would have preferred the worst physical pain to this grudging put-upon delivery, as though they and not I were suffering the real punishment. Now, this is a girl who fabricated divine visitations of the Virgin Mary. Evidently, she's fantasized from the age of five about being beaten. She has a history of lying to garner admiration and pity. I noticed the connection between her need for attention and the masochism of this martyr act. All I did was bring it to her attention, as a reporter might do while interviewing. I never threatened her. That's the last thing I'm going to say. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Your Honor, I'd like to respond. Go ahead. My being an author doesn't justify these intrusive and unwanted detentions, and it doesn't mean that I invited them. What he wrote was of a personal nature. It was not a book review. He called me a liar. He stalked me. He called me a whore. All right. The restraining order is granted for one year. Under this order, the accused cannot come within 50 feet of the complainant. Cannot call, cannot email, cannot text, cannot write or otherwise initiate contact with her without facing imprisonment. Mr. Elkin, you're free to go. Miss Hyde, please wait a moment for your paperwork. Especially with the sentence. I mean, when the judge came down. I mean, it was truthful, obviously. I mean, you dragged him in front of that judge. He must be sorry he was ever born. He messed with the wrong girl. He had no idea who he was dealing with. It was awesome. <laughs> and you did great. You handled yourself so well. He threw me with the book thing. He just shot himself in the foot. Because that proves that he's nuts. Like some psycho waving around a Britney Spears album, claiming that the lyrics are for him. Except Britney Spears doesn't sing about being a precocious fake martyr. Unless there's a subtext I'm not getting. Oh. It doesn't matter what the book is about. He had no right. Have you guys ever read my book? You know me is... <laughs> I like ones with pictures. <laughs> well, Lens was the most visceral response my book has ever gotten. Probably the biggest response it will ever get. I'm sure that's not true. No, it definitely is. And you want to know the best part? I'm out of ideas. If I'm not lying about myself, then I don't know what to write about. Plenty of people are autobiographical writers. Yeah, people who do important things. Not whiny kids who turn into whinier, shittier adults. You're being too hard on yourself, Is. Why are you guys always so nice to me? Uh, what are you talking about? Why don't you tell me when I'm being an asshole? Because we're your friends? I shouldn't have gotten that restraining order. I shouldn't have gotten that second book deal. I am sitting here fucking my life up and you're just watching. We support whatever decisions you make. God, stop. I don't need support right now. Hey, what is your problem? Is. Isabel. Hey, Susan. Isabel, I have just about had it. Listen, I, I just had this whole ordeal with a restraining order, so things have been really, really crazy. I can't accept any more of your excuses. If you're not teaching, you're moving. If you're not moving, you're in court. Listen, I just need one more week. This isn't working out. I have to drop you, Isabel. I'm sorry.
Can you spare a dollar? Go away. You, you really don't like to talk to people, do you? No, I don't. And I just lost my job, okay? So leave me alone. I lost my job five years ago, you know? Oh my god. Here, just take the goddamn money, okay? Just take it. Just have it. I don't want it. I am a selfish person, okay? I understand that now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, ma'am. Oh my god, you scared the shit out of me. Can I help you? Mm -mm -mm, no. Gwen? Forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. It's been 19 years since my last confession. Tell me your sins, my child. I lied about seeing the Virgin Mary when I was nine years old. Just so you know, I haven't been to church in a while, but I felt like I should apologize. So, I'm sorry for lying, and I'm sorry for exploiting the church by writing a book about it. I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's it. I'm just forgiven? If you forgive men when they sin against you, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. Okay, fair enough. I don't really have anyone to talk to right now. I think I just lost my only friends because I wanted them to stop being nice to me. I lost both my jobs because I'm a piece of shit. Oh, can I say shit? I probably shouldn't say shit. I'm sorry for saying shit. <clears throat> Why don't you want your friends to be kind to you? I don't think I deserve it. It's almost like I welcome these things that are happening to me because I, I want to be punished. Someone figured that out about me and I humiliated him. I'm not a good person. Convincing yourself that you're bad is easier than trying to be good. Well, I don't know how to fix any of this. Do not let kindness and truth leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. That's not bad stuff. There is goodness in everyone. If you look closer, you will find it. Thank you, Father. Good luck, Isabel.